turn. Yours is on. Mine's on. You want to check mine too? Yeah, that's awful. It's level though. No, it's not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> that is like so much sugar and malt. That's disgusting. On that 30 minute break, we might, might need to bring up that chainsaw. <laughs> well, I mean, we it, that's hot enough we can grab real wood now. Oh, okay. You want to go grab a couple logs of that? I mean, are we recording? Yeah, we're already recording. We can do 30 minutes and then we can do that, give it longer. We don't have enough firewood in the wood. We don't have enough wood in the fire? No. There's not enough fire in that we wood. camera and then we'll, we'll continue. What's that? This is Name Pending. <laughs> I'm Keeper. I'm Mike Culberson. And we're working with stuff. We're getting cold. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a little chilly out here. I don't know if it's as cold as my hat dictates, but it's cold enough to where Keeper's wearing a hat. Keeper's wearing a hat. He's still wearing Crocs, but his Crocs have socks. I do have socks with my Crocs. <laughs> it's socks and Crocs and hats and bats. Hey, you should give Pearl a stick. Oh, she found one. She found one. <laughs> All right, so now that we're sitting down, <laughs> I'm Keeper. That's Mike. Uh, woo! This is name pending, <laughs> and we're here to hang out with you guys. <laughs> Videos might change because we got a new camera. Right we, now, we're charging it because... We, we're charging the battery because during setup, we just left the camera on, and then it killed the battery. And you might get a spit take of me trying Jamin Cack, worst freaking margarita. Oh God, mix. I hope I got that on camera because that was fantastic. That you was horrible. You spit that everywhere. That was disgusting. Didn't you say? Didn't you say? Um, Wolf liked it. Wolf liked it. Yeah. Wolf did like it. Props to him. I I guess he just had poor taste buds for someone that didn't drink a lot. Hey, wait. But, so do you have? Do you have? Your starter material? I actually wanted to start, but I wanted to start with your book recommendations because where I'm at, I'm at Galaxy's Edge. Just finished book six, so I'm on book seven and eight because they do them in segments. So I want to start with your book recommendations. Okay, so right now I am in Audible listening to... Um, it's a little warm. Yeah, make sure that we're not getting getting tacky mics or anything. I don't want to. I spent enough money on these mics. I don't want. I don't want to burn these mics up. It's okay. Eventually, we'll have more than enough cameras that it'll be fine too. <laughs> and replacement batteries. Yeah, actual replacement batteries. Instead, of, I just got the camera in yesterday, and I didn't even think about the extra battery for anything it's okay so new podcaster shit right yeah you know um we youngins uh but i just finished prisoner of darkness okay major owens was in jail it was a kangaroo court obviously prisoner of darkness you know this from reading that major owens is going to salt flat mines you never see the sun da 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 da, da. they don't need prison guards because mm -hmm. it's on a planet somewhere so so I've been I listening. Just finished that. I've been and I'm super excited because you you're you're only so far through Galaxy's Edge, and I love Galaxy's Edge. There was a fucking sale. There was a sale, and I bought all the re all the stuff on my wish list for sixty eight dollars. <laughs> the rest of that series, all the other series you recommended, where aliens come in and say we need all your shit. Mm -hmm. So I bought all those books. I bought a couple other self improvement books. Sixty eight dollars sale. It still goes on for, I think, one, two more days right now. So I'm listening to 
uh, an audio book of a book series that I read most of. But, like, I wasn't really excited about the book series okay. when I read it. Because it's part of the, the new genre, the lit RPG genre. Okay, yeah. That, um, what was that one book that came out that they made a movie, and the movie was really good, the book was really good? Um, You're not talking about Ready Player One. Yeah, I'm talking about Ready Player One. Ready Player One really kicked off the, the lit The first art- book, not the second book. The first book, not the second book. Yeah. But, and I the thought they have the first book. I thought they did a really good job in the movie. The movie yes. was so good that my parents enjoyed it. My sister, me and her were talking about this um, four or five months ago. You were like, I was talking to you, and I was talking to my sister, and she was like, oh, yeah, I'm reading Ready Player One right now. Yeah, I remember that. And then she jumped to the second book, so I finished the first book, so we had something to talk about. Right, and, right. And then she finished the second book. It was like, the second book sucks. The second book's awful. And I was like, I already bought it on Audible, though. Yeah, and the other, the other book... That he wrote, I didn't like it either. Um, but so I'm listening to this uh, Audible book of the series because I ran out of I because I do that hour drive to work every day during the week, right? So I need something. So your neighbor, those in your neighborhood, yeah, forgot his ID card this morning. Ooh, ooh, cable, cable, got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in danger. Fire. <laughs> we we almost burned through our fucking cable. <laughs> I don't want to buy those too. Again. Again. <laughs> no, but he forgot his cack this morning. Yeah? <laughs> so, Did he do the excursion back out? My only, man. Only because he had to get other people on, on installation. And it was just like... That sucks. But he did it, so, came back, and we had lunch with him at Back Unturned. So, anyways, nothing. no one cares about your shit. Never, never. Um, we're talking about my shit. My shit's the most important shit. Yes, the book, the movie. Yeah. So, anyways, I uh, I read this, this lit RPG series, and the series is Carl the Dungeon Crawler. Because he has an hour drive. Remember. I, uh... And so I was like, I have no Audible books. Let me listen to this in Audible. And actually, while I'm while I'm saying this, can you look up the Audible version of Carl the Dungeon Crawler? I I can't remember who does the the audio for it. But Carl, Carl. <laughs> but uh, it was like the audio, the Audible version, fucking changed the entire book for me. Like I'm invested. Because they did Dungeon didn't... Crawler Carl. Yeah, Dungeon Crawler Carl. Matt Dinneman. That's the author. I burned my finger on that wood. That's spicy wood. <laughs> Audible narrator. Audible. Learn to spell. Man. So and and I uh I mean because they get like very invested, like the 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 way that they do the audible. Uh, version of it, like they they're really doing the characterization and everything. Jeff Hayes. Jeff Hayes. That's yeah. right. Jeff Hayes. He's done I've, a couple books. He's done a couple to. books. Yes, and I've loved what he's done. Uh, I just can't remember people's names. Uh, but so the premise is, uh, so you've seen Pearl. Go get away from the fire, girl. It's get away not. from the fire. Uh, the, you, you've seen, um, or you've seen, you've read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yes, I read that, I didn't listen right. to it. So you know the premise is, is that aliens come in and they demolition Earth? Yeah, because it's time. So, essentially, that concept a little bit, but aliens come in and they take all the minerals from Earth, wiping out a good portion of Earth's population because everyone who is in a structure gets flattened. Any structure gets flattened. And then, but the moneymaker for them is then they open up a dungeon, right? Okay. It's a TV show. Like like Survivor, right? No, no, they had, it was like Gladiator. They made a couple movies about this in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, so the premise is aliens show up and they set up a dungeon. The structure is a dungeon, but it's a... Game, it's like a TV show, and it's Carl and his cat Princess Donut. I thought my name was good, 
Madame Floof. Princess Donut. Princess Donut. Gained sapience in okay. the dungeon, which is awesome. And it is full of, like, I'm not trying to give everything away, but, like, there's meth dealing, lava spitting llamas. Um, you know, goblins who are also into meth. And then one of them tries to hook up with Carl. And he's like, it smells like rotten meat. Like, like it is fucking ridiculous. And, but the voice acting, because the book didn't impress me. Like, reading the, the novel, I, I wasn't absorbed. I'm not impressed by a lot of the lit RPG genre. No, there was, I was reading somewhere on Reddit that there's this new author trying to build Gauntlet Legends in a book. And it's going to be back to how Goosebumps, where you could choose your story. Yeah. And I was like, okay, there's there's a lot of potential for you to build this book right now. There's there's a lot of potential because we don't have a lot of the build your own story books now. And we'll see where it goes. It's supposed to release early next year. You remember Pearl is hanging out over here by the fire, keeping herself warm. Nice and warm. She don't got no fur. She get cold real easy. I think I'm gonna have to add that book series to my already full collection if you're gonna do it you gotta do the audible because reading it is not the same I because can't read so and i'm gonna ruin a piece of this right you're not gonna hurt my feelings i'll forget but the the ai that's in charge of the dungeon has a foot fetish for carl's feet and so they do like they'll read all the like like ability screens and everything. And the AI gives him an ability called smush. Cabo, that's a hot stick. No. But when it reads off when the like in in the book when the AI is reading off the ability, it reads it off. Cabo, stop trying to eat spicy fucking coal. Fire stick mine. But when it when the AI in the book, because it has a foot fetish for Carl's feet, when it's reading it off, it reads it off like they describe it in the book like a incel, fucking heavy breathing, masturbating. <laughs> yes. Stop. Stop. I fucking died laughing. I died fucking laughing at that part. Uh, so that's our book segment. Yes. <laughs> we're really, really trying to push book segments because reading and even just listening to it does increase intelligence, increase vocabulary. Listen. It does help you escape from your current reality and gets you into a different reality. It it helps. It's a release. But, but and, and, like, science shows, Cabo, stop with the spicy... Whatever, he'll learn. Um... <laughs> Science has shown that, like, a person just sitting in front of a TV and just watching TV has a very lower brain activity than someone who is actually imagining something, playing video yep. games, playing, reading a book, listening to an audio book, anything like this. There's a lot higher brain activity. Agreed, because video games, and they did a study within the past 10 years over this. For the past 20 years, they did a study, but it was 10 years that they collected all the data finally. And they realize that video games have a place as long as you don't overdo it mm -hmm. because it helps puzzle solving skills. It helps like, especially the story ones where you have to say certain things or understand certain things. It helps you understand how to talk to people, how to deal with people. Yes. Which has its place, but it shouldn't be, for example, GTA, whatever. And I'm just doing this all the time and I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not learning anything. I'm just, mm -hmm going around shoot 'em up games. And that's where a lot of people are just going, shoot 'em up games. Me and well, me and Jess talked about this literally yesterday where most of the games I play are more indie games because the indie games have more story to them and more life to them than just shoot 'em and that's it. Plus, I want you to support our indie game developers because that's where we get a lot of that that good that good good progression in video game 
in the video game world and in, in, in the new technologies and in the new dynamics. Like that's that's why that's why ro- uh, roguelites took off so hard, and that was because of indie developers. Baldur's Gate is another one. It's not a triple A game. It's not a triple A game at all. It was a two A game at most for the developers they had for it. Same with Helldivers. Helldivers was another one. Wait. Was Helldivers. Helldivers is a game? Helldivers is a game. Okay, so wait. What's the premise of Helldivers? I can't explain it that well without you looking it up the a reason, little bit. The reason I said this Here is because Helldivers is a novel. Here you go. It's a novel series. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. But Helldivers is pretty much... There's three different races, and then including yourselves... But you have aliens, your robots, and then your futuristic aliens. Aliens, robots, and Zerg. That's what it's pretty much. So you have your three different races there. And you're pretty much... They have seasons in the game where you have to push back the enemy to reclaim land. So you'll be doing, like, escort duty. Or you'll be doing um, mine cleanup or reclaiming certain items you left there. But you can build your own layout. Watch your mic. You can build your own layout, so you can. I can go in as a assault trooper. Someone else can go in as a jump trooper or a shock trooper. So you can build out your layouts across the board. Hell Divers is one of the best kept secrets for players. You all share the same screen, and you're all running together. Why haven't we been playing this? I brought it up before. No, you have not. I have. No, you're full of shit. On the Spooky Spook channel, I brought it up. I was like, oh, we should play this, and then you're like, but risk of rain. Okay, you're not wrong. Risk of Rain is pretty Risk of good. Rain 2 is the game. Agreed. Agreed. And it put it put Helldivers to shame only because I didn't have to share a screen with people. Which, by the way, I'm upset because we need to do some more Risk of Rain with your brother. Once he gets back and gets his new laptop in, because he bought the same laptop I did, but then he was like, well, I'm canceling it because I found it cheaper. So we just, we just left books to go into... Video games, but we're going to go back to books. All right, let's um, go. Because Helldivers, book. Helldivers, the novel series. And I think I got to, like, book two or three before I got on to another series. I read one. But the premise of the series is that, you know, like, it's a post-apocalyptic world. There's mutant creatures on the surface. Humanity has ha- has invented airships. Yep. And they held the hell divers are essentially scout teams as they send down to the surface to kill the shit out of monsters and recover and scavenge materials that they need to keep the ships up in the air. And that's why I was excited for the game when I first heard it with my military group at the time. I was like, oh yeah, sure. Sounds great. I read the book. Look looks like a great fucking game. Wasn't even related. No. But still great game. You can definitely screw your partners over in this game by and a lot of it which i really loved so a bunch of us that grew up with the cheat codes yeah up down left right up down left right r2 r2 l1 l2 left on right up left on right up health code what's up but a bunch of those are how you call in your own reinforcement stuff really so it's like oh you want a mech suit have fun it's left up down right w T R Q, have fun. So there's that, and then when your buddy goes down and dies, you call a recall because he's downloaded somewhere on the ether up in the cloud. Yeah. You have to do a whole nother random set of things, and you're just like, eventually after a while you get used to, oh, I'm calling mech suit after mech suit after mech suit, or I'm calling recall someone else. So you're just do 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 to the point that it's gotten to the point that some of those were my passwords at a point. Just because I was so used to hitting those on a on a keyboard. But fun game. But that that's books and video games for us right now. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean I'm still doing Metal Gear stuff. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know what got into me. The other night I was having trouble getting to sleep. Mm-hmm. And I hopped on and it's like the autumn or the winter sale or whatever sell it is on Steam. Oh, and those they, are dangerous. They had, uh, yeah, I know. I've got tons of games. I've got the entire Serious Sam collection, and I don't play the entire Serious Sam collection. I have 2,000 games on Steam. I've maybe played, like, 20% you're, of them. You're beating me significantly because I've managed to restrain myself. 
Yeah, well, I didn't. It came down to, oh, I'm a contractor now. Fuck this. Yeah. Watch this. Oh, I'm making money. Oh, Steam sale. I like this whole series. I like this buy whole this series. Game, buy I this like game, this. Buy this. I only spent three hundred dollars. That's so, fine. So I'm on. Like I've I can't sleep, and so I hop on the the computer. And at first, I was going to edit videos, and then so you started that. And then I started that, like, and then I was like, man, I don't want to edit videos this isn't right now. Fun. And so I was like, one of those hunting games popped up on sale, right? And I was like. I've always wondered what these hunting games are about because they keep producing them, right? And so the one I bought was something from, like, 2017, right? Okay. <laughs> because Stick. it was... Sticks about to fall out. Because it was, like, nothing money. It was, yeah. like, nothing money, right? You're talking about five, ten bucks. It's just, like... Whatever. I'll spend that at a gas station. Um, And so I bought it, and then I'm, like, fucking around with it. But it's 2017... Which, like, now I'm like, because, like, the doors open and the doors just go boom. And I'm like. I'm like, oh, that's, like, two or three years ago. <laughs> like, when I look at 2017, I was like, oh, it's two or three years ago. This is right around the quarter. Six years ago. Oh, damn. Yeah. But I was sitting there going, I don't know why people enjoy these games. I've tried a couple of them. And they just. They don't attract me. Even, like, hunting in real life, I'll go hunting in real life because I know I'm getting something. Yes! Like, thank you! Like, <coughs> I don't very, even really enjoy hunting in real life, though. No, if I if I know I'm going to get something, like I paid good money to get this game thing, sure. Or if I'm going fishing and I paid good money to get... Now, fishing is different for me. Well, I can go and fish and be fine for hours. Yeah, because I am very much... I will sit on the bank... And I will sit there with a fucking case of beer. Yep. And I'll drink my beer and my, f and I can catch nothing and be fine and be fine. It was a it was a drinking fishing trip. Mm hmm. But when you're hunting, I don't mind the cold, so the colds never bothered me. Even up in Minnesota, when me and my dad went, and we're just chilling there, and it's just like I'm sitting right next to a tree, freezing my ass off. I'm like, and I'm supposed to find this fun? Yeah. Like. I understand the premise behind, okay, I'm providing food for my family. I understand that, and that is, that's awesome. There's nothing better than either providing for yourself or providing for your family. Right. That's awesome. It's like, I got paid. I made food. I got food. I did this. Boom. Problem solved. But when you go out there, you freeze your ass off. You're all gussied up to the nine. You woke up really fucking early for no reason. And you don't shoot anything, don't kill anything, don't skin anything. And yep. it's like, well, I guess we're going to have these sausages that we brought because none of us got anything. Which, you're you're going to call me a bitch boy, but I am way past the point where I want to skin anything anymore. Like, I'm super taken into a fucking meat processing place. If it's on my own land, and it's out of season, but it's on my land, it's happening at my house. Because mm. that's legal in Texas. Mm -hmm. Hands down, I got to... Fix the population, because they're just overcrowded to high heaven. So, but I want to get into the meat of our topics. Yes, we actually have real people topics. So, do you want to go first, or you want me to go first? I want to touch on yours after we switch cameras, because there's a lot of stuff I really want to talk about yours. Okay. Argentinian president. Once we fix camera, good one. Well, don't don't forget the diamonds. Have you even touched on that one? I was going to leave that one as a... So, royalty. Mm-hmm. Royalty marrying commoners. Did you know they actually get fined? They get fined? They get fined. Even to... They have the possibility of getting fined, and they're also deemed no longer royalty. It is a blessing to continue calling them royalty. Really? This goes back to... As far as I could find in modern days time, so this is 1900s to today. Like Princess Diana? Princess Diana. We're talking about um, the one in the 40s married a um, European married an American actress. And then the most recent was, um, I can't remember her name now. Um, but essentially, they're no longer, con they're royalty by title, but they don't have anything attached to them. It's like, okay, you're royalty because you're married to the person, but you're not royalty by blood. 
is like unless we keep royalty together is like I'm one family you're another family name and maybe like six generations ago we were the same but our family can marry each other but that's it and we see this in World War II I mean so how's that any different from you fucking your sister it's not man but the only way to keep your title and stay in good graces is some cousin loving. Is some cousin loving. You're not a mister till you sleep with your sister. <laughs> I was like, man, that's like Tennessee, Alabama, West Virginia all mixed together. Just fucking Shoot. called me king. <laughs> it's like, I was a mister at 12 years old. Let's go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> don't even have moonshine out here. But the other. Look, don't tip me, bro. You got to drive. I know. Don't tip me. So, that really floored me. I'm looking at all this royalty and how many commoners have been thrown into it. 47 commoners have been thrown into royal bloodline. Of the British Empire by itself? Across the board. Across the board. Chinese, Japanese, Indonesian, um, African bloodlines. Um, We're talking about um, the Nordic bloodlines. So, a bunch of the Vikings that were pagan royalty yeah is what they're historically calling them it's like okay well that that's not that's not that many in the past 123 years 47 it's like that's that's kind of a small number that's a lot smaller than i thought it would be but this is just what's tracked there might be more but just what is commonly tracked the other thing i wanted to touch on was uh you can touch on me baby oh yeah student debt government paying it off oh uh, fuck are they actually doing it well this is counting with the overload of cost versus income so you may be so much in student debt but if your household income i don't know if this is passed yet but if your household income this is the bill supposedly coming is over 125 thousand for your household income for the low number your low number is 125 they'll pay off all of it anything under 125 the high number is 250 so you're talking about two people that are making 150 135 120 you're good but anything like once you hit 250 total number they're not paying off shit but it was like we're talking about Okay, so we're, what it, let me sit down. (laughs) What it sounds like is we're trying to institute this class divide even harder than we already have been. Correct. And now they went a step forward. Uh Uh-oh. I was like, okay, you know what? You're building a class divide. Got it. I can. Wait a minute. That was bad? What? No, I just wanted the, yes. Flamey flame. Flamey flame. But this whole relief program, guess how much they're paying off. Guess. Throw a number out there. They're not paying off all the debt. I'll give you the hint. They're not paying off all the debt. Like $20 million? 20000 per person. 20000 Now, a community college here in town, in San Antonio, what, it, what do you think the, the yearly cost for one year is? I don't know. I couldn't even guess. Community college is 18000 So it was like, we'll pay off one year. This is the whole debt relief college fund that everybody's like, oh, we're only going to pay off so 15 to twenty. We're, we'll pay for your freshman year. Realistically, we are, <laughs> let, let's be honest here, we are close to a depression. Agreed. I'm not even going to call it a recession. We are close to a depression. We are close to some fucking 1930 shit, right? Like, this shit's going to hit hard. It's going to hit fast. And we're all going to be sucking it up. People are going to be trying to feed their families. We're already seeing it. Look at how many people still have their kids living with them. And the reason that they have their kids living with them is because... They can't afford it. They can't afford it. And this is not like like because you and me are growing up and it's like, oh, you still live with your parents? Well, you're a sad sack. But they went an extra step forward. Uh-oh. Not only did they do that, 
It's like, oh, we only pay off 20000 But they jumped another step forward and it was like, if you took out a Pell Grant, if, if you took out a Pell Grant, we're only going to pay off 10000 Motherfucker. So you're only paying for less than half my first year. Not counting school books, not counting tuition costs, just the cost for all my fucking classes for a whole year. It's like, so this whole, oh yeah, we're going to pay off student debt? Actually, I agree with it. Fuck you. It's not going to do anything. It's like, one year. I'll pay for one year. You know what? Military is like, hey, you know what? We'll pay for it. each year. You have $4,500. Have fun. This is your, do something. Make yourself better. Now, the government's like, well, we have this bill. We're going to pay off student debt. 20, 40, my wife, that's 60. It's like, your average student debt for a teacher, $80,000. Fucking seriously? $80,000. Today's time, $80,000. Now, keeping in mind, by the same token, that college, <laughs> college should not cost as much as it's costing people. Correct. Congratulations. This is what happens when you have the fucking government involve itself in a private sector is that it fucking overcharges the market. Yep. It's happened with insurance. It's happened with medical. It's happening with student debt. It's happening with fucking the prison system. Congratulations. You know what this brings me to? <laughs> Let's go. What's up? The Argentinian president. And Not at this yet, point, though. no, Not yet. no. No. Give me 30 seconds. No, no, no. Give me 30 seconds. Okay. And we can jump to it. This is where the bill relief program is. It's like, okay, we'll pay off student debt. They're not really paying off student debt. They're like, we'll take pennies off your dime. Pennies. That's that's what this is. This is pennies. We'll jump on the new camera with you guys in a couple seconds. We need to put more fire on this fire. Yeah. So we'll see you in a few seconds, and we'll continue on. Okay. Recording with the mics now. We're doing mic recordings. Uh, so we just finished talking about student debt. We start finishing. And, and you interjected, and I'm all on board now. Argentinian president. Okay, so the Argentinian president. Now I want because you're heated. Let's go. I want everyone to keep in mind. I have not done all the research. I I did a bunch of research on him. He's okay. Even, he's here in the states right now. Yeah, is he? He is. He. I thought. I thought I saw he did a TED talk. He's here in the States, or was in the States, at least two, three days ago at yeah. most. He was, he's supporting Israel. Yeah. He's talking with a bunch of different Which, people around. You know what? I don't care what anyone says. I also support Israel. Do you know why I support Israel? All ears. The reason I support Israel is for a couple different reasons. One of the reasons is because they've always been friends of America. Mm -hmm. So I'm on board with that. They're not... Israel's never been like, let's kill Americans. So, congratulations, we're friends. Yep. Um, the other reason is because I am a Christian. Guess what? The closest people we got to what... I, I, I realize that we're all like people of the book, right? We, we all believe in one God, right? Yep. Us and, you know, uh, the Jews and the the Islamic folk, the, the Allah lovers. Muslims. Yeah, Muslims. That, that's the ones. We all believe in one God, right, at the end of the day. We just have different interpretations of what that means. But I think the Jews have the closest to what the Christians have, right? Agreed. Also, they're not saying, hey, we should kill everyone. No, and I was, I saw that, I was like, heck yeah. Like, we're talking about somewhere that's been socialist for years, decades. Mm -hmm. They've been socialist. He was like... Department of this. Oh, Argentina? Yep. Yeah. Department of this, gone. Department of this, gone. Yeah, Department no. of this, gone. Voted By in. By the way, he's Oprah. Department of this, gone. Vote. They voted the man in. Voted. The people said, we are tired of shit. And he comes in, he kicks in the door, bam! And he says, hey, I am going to build a budget. 
Right? An actual budget. An actual the, budget. The full the- budget that was there before that was like, we have a bu- No, you don't. You just spend money more right. on government departments. Anyone, by the way, seeing this in like doing like, you know, parallels with America, there might be reasons behind that. Um, but anyways, <laughs> so he, he, you know, did you see the one where he was like looking at the board and he's like, this department gone. Yeah. This he's department just gone. Literally throwing this them in department the trash. gone. Yes. And he's like, so we need this one, this one, this one, and this one. All the socialist bullshit, gone. all the justice warrior crap, gone. gone. Fucking gone. Because guess what? And I'm also, and, and here's here's the other side of this statement, right? Is because I am a proponent of separation of church and state. Yes. Right? I am very much a proponent of separation of church and state. I do not think, and you're going to think me fucked up, I do not agree with churches getting tax write-offs. Why would I not agree? I think to a level, once they hit a certain point, they should. Because they're at a point that, yes, the five... At at some point, you're running a business. Correct. You're running a business. And if you're doing a proper church, even a biblical church, it should get to the point where it's a business and it's big enough. And you shouldn't have a problem. You might want to razzle that. You you shouldn't have a problem paying taxes Mm -hmm. to a certain point. And... A lot of the churches that I've attended were paying taxes. Not on the church tax point, but they're paying extra towards certain things to pretty much incur the level of taxes that they would have already paid. Right. And if they do that, fine. Put a stipulation in there. Once you hit this, then you pay equivalent taxes. Because there are some 501c3s that never make it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I don't they're think not making sh- profit. And we shouldn't tax them, but there should be a stipulation once you get to this, whatever this is across the populace of America, that you will pay in accordance equal to this. Yes. And I agree on that. I'm not in disagreement of that at all. Razzle. Dazzle me. Give it the dazzle, bro. Give it the razzle dazzle. (laughs) (laughs) no but i think what he's doing is actually really really good no i'm fully supporting it will take him out of their freaking socialist hey they they need it you know what other country needs it colombia colombia would fucking love to be carried out of that shit argentina was headed in the direction of colombia here's here's the thing there needs to be some Welfare programs, socialist programs in a functioning first world country. Because yes, and I think America's overdone a lot of that. America has overdone it. America has gone too far. There should too be a fucking level. Far. There like, should be a level. This is there the should level. be expectations set. And there you, should be time limits and set. And if you're getting this, you need to pass this. It takes this for this person to get a job. Then you should meet these rec. Because my, my dad said it to me when I was a youngin, and still says it to me to this day. You should give the you should give the hotter razzle. The hotter razzle. Uh, he still says it to me this day. Razzle dazzle me, Petey. <laughs> oh, I'll razzle dazzle you, boy. I'm in danger. <laughs> uh, but he still says it to me to this day. Is that you are only three steps away. From fucking failure. You're only three steps away, three big mistakes from being on the streets. Can you, can you pour a shot? That's a bit more than a shot, boy. Fire. Fire! Fire, man, I have made fire. Fire! <laughs> it's your turn next. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just throw the jug on. <laughs> <laughs> Hoo-hoo, gotta warm my crotch up. <laughs> but no, he's he's doing what should have been done for a long time, and the fact that the people voted him in, people were like, "We're done with this old shit. Let's go in. Let's actually do this properly. Vote him in. Push him in." He's like, "We're making ch-. day one." He's like, "I'm here." Like you said, kink, yes. kick the door in. 
I'm changing this, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, all those out the door. And literally in the video, he's throwing them in a trash can. Yeah, no, it, it, I mean, he's doing all these talks, and like, like you get, he's very expressive, right? Oh, he's expressive, he's, and he's, the biggest thing that he's doing that is helping him is bringing notoriety across the board. He's like, this is who I am, and this is what I'm changing. He's letting everyone know, and yeah. he's not being He's not shy. He's, he's not shy. He's like, this is changing. Watch me. So, I'm excited to see where they go. I'm excited to see where he leads. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Congratulations. Argentina, you have done it. You have done it right. Keep going. But you, you touched on Colombia a little bit. Oh, Colombia. So, Colombia... Now, here's the thing. How much is Colombia being Colombia? And how much and, and I have to say this for all the, the South American countries is how much are these countries being these countries and how much is it the CIA being let loose and doing CIA things? I'll go a step further, not discounting any of that. How much are we sanctioning each country? Yeah. Because Cuba, perfect example, has been for a while until recently, I think it was 2016, 2017, pretty much you're stuck in the 1940s. Yeah. We sanctioned the hell out of them. Do I think it was warranted to that level? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Do I think it should have happened a little bit? Yeah, maybe. You played with the wrong boys. We don't support that. Here's your punishment, and it's done. Goes back to prison system. What is the point of prison system? It's supposed to... Rehabilitate people. Guess what the prison system doesn't do? Rehabilitation. It doesn't do rehabilitation. The the prison system, as is de currently designed by the government, is to make money. That's what the current prison system is designed for. Now, in my system, we're going to go into Mike's system. Good, because we talked about this offline a couple days ago. We did. And, and, and I was I'm, like, this is a perfect segue because Mike's all these socialist countries... In I, South America specifically. I do believe in rehabilitation. I do not believe that rehabilitation is the only solution. I do not believe. And I'm talking actual rehabilitation. I'm not talking about American rehabilitation where we don't actually rehabilitate yep. people. But I want punishment. I want to punish people. Like, I'm talking let's bring back flogging. Let's bring back sh public shaming. Public let's executions. bring back public executions, and let's fucking kill people. I'm sorry. If it is without a doubt that you have killed someone, I kill you. If it is without a doubt that you have someone, especially a child, you're dead. Not only are you dead, but I'll give you to the fucking family. Yep. I fine. will give you to the fucking family. I will give you to that mother and father and those uncles and those cousins. I'll give you to those motherfuckers. And if you disappear off the face of the earth. Or those friends that just became family at some yes, point. It was yeah. like, fuck you. Fuck it. Have fun. Fuck it. In Alabama. In, Alabama did was his, uh, drug castrations. I think they finally approved it. I'm going to look that up. I think they actually finally got that approved. Drug cast cast drug sterilizations sterilization that's what it is. Moo cow back there somewhere. Moo. So funny thing about cows. When I was young, my dad said that like, if you drove by a bunch of cows, this is gonna sound fucked up and racist, but I'm still gonna say it. But if you drove by a bunch of cows and you thought about them like talking like a fucking hardcore fucking ghetto ass black dude moo motherfucker moo <laughs> so this was in 2019 alabama governor k ivy signed a bill monday june 12th so whatever that monday was that requires people convicted of certain sex offenses to undergo forced chemical castration that has been condemned as inhumane ineffective and unconstitutional so any this goes further into it. Anyone 21 or older convicted of certain sex crimes involving a child younger than 21 to go through this process. It's like so, okay, well then don't be a dumbass. I don't don't be stupid. Another thing going into to my reformation of our our prison systems and our public 
you know, punishment systems is I do not think anyone should be in prison or life. any or, or anything else for more than a year. See, I'd go as far as five. Five years would be the max. No, because but, but do you listen. know why I say that? Let's go. The I'm reason here. I say a year is because at, if we go beyond a year, you know you're completely disconnected from society. You're no longer, you no longer have the ability to integrate into society anymore. And this is where I'll segue into that. Because after your year, you're, you're, you're still in prison, but you're in a halfway house on the prison. You have access to the internet. You have access to talk to your family. You have a phone. You have, you have life, but because of the offense you committed is so extreme, you will still be doing a certain level of activity here, but we're not going to cut you off for that whole first year. Well, and this ties into when people are on these chain gangs. Exactly. And, and when they, and I'm not talking about like the floggings or, or, no. or, or, or the, the public shamings, because honestly, those should, like, floggings honestly should be moment, right? Yeah. And then you're, you're released, your punishment is released and you're done. Shaming should go on for like a couple days, a week, maybe. At you most know, two weeks, depending on. Yeah, you're severity. you're in the stockade or whatever, um, and then you're you're released. You're still right? getting fed. You're still you right. You right. come out. Your your but, eight to five job. Your nine to three is your flogging, and this is your punishment. Your stockade. But but if you are in the chain gang, or if you're in rehabil actual rehabilitation, where we're trying to help you. But we're teaching integrate. you a trade while you're we're doing this. We're teaching you into a trade. We're integrating you into society again. You get paid. Exactly. Do you know why? The most important reason, and I actually found this out by watching a documentary on a... Because you're providing for your family. Still. Thank you. Thank you. You 100%. are providing for your family. And this is where, at most, I'd say, would be five years. But your whole first year, while you're part of this rehabilitation process... The what process? Rehabilitation. Rehabilitating. Rehabilitating. Your whole first year, you are in our world. Mm -hmm. You were in the correctional facility world. In those four years, depending on severity of your crime at most, is you going, you still have, you still have access to the outside. We're not cutting. Here you go. Here's pretty much an apartment that you and four other people share. Yeah. Cool. If you guys ruin it, your guys are ruining it for the next people. Here's, here's access to the world. You still have to do your nine to five, which chain gang, whatever. But we treat them like people. Yep. Yeah, you're still a person. <clears throat> and here's how you how you make sure that people are treated like people by their guards and everything. If a guard mi is found mistreating one of the inmates, they are immediately sentenced to the same sentence as that inmate. You know, that would actually change a lot. That really would. I mean, you think about it, it's like... No, well, you're in, you're in for, I don't know, grand larceny. Mm -hmm. so, you know, shit ton of money. You, you did something monetarily wrong to someone else or a company. Or, you're doing a year. We're not going to give you the whole five years because it's not that big depending on how much you stole. Now, if you stole millions or billions, okay, you might be in for two. Yeah. But your first year is we're going to rehabilitate you, put you in this bubble in a way to fix your mindset or at least help you assist you get to a point that is more human or more public in in in, in line with, with populace the, with populace. the population like and then past that it was like congratulations you passed your year you don't have any strikes any marks on your record here's a government laptop because you know every fucking school's giving them to kids now Especially during COVID, it was like, you get a laptop, you get a laptop. It was like, the school was broke a year ago, and now they have money for all these laptops? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well then, give them to the prisoners. Yep. You know what? Whatever they want to do on the internet, fine. What it? Boom. Problem solved. But yeah. they're allowed to be... People. People. We're no longer... Well, you're in a box. Well, and that's the other thing is, like, the lifetime felon, the background checks where it shows that you were a felon and that you were in prison and everything that's out the window. I'm sorry. You don't, this doesn't get to be held. Once you have served Once you your served, punishment, it's done. 
That's it. It should That's be. That's it. Oh, you got a speeding ticket back when you were 16. Yeah, well, I'm 72. Or or you But that was 16. Or you were or you were 18 years old and you robbed a gas station. Or exact or you're hanging with and, the wrong crowd. And now crowd, you're, now so. you're 35 years old and it's like yeah, no, and and people lose their rights. They lose their gun rights. Yep. They lose all their their rights. Their voting their voting rights over this shit. This goes even further. So I have a couple friends that deal with parental rights at this point. Because whatever, they got divorced, disagreement, didn't understand, they weren't on the same standpoint. Simply put, they're getting divorced. But because he was a juvenile delinquent at the time, that's being brought into question now when he's 42. It's like, but I've worked for the government for 20 years. Yeah. That's never been an issue for them. And now, like, been making high six figures. And now I'm having an issue because back when I was 16, I hung out with the wrong crowd. Yeah. Like, my kids are making straight A's. We may be getting divorced, but my kids are making straight A's. I've never laid a hand on my kid. Yep. My kids are triple A athletes. They're great fucking kids. And now... I can't have custody because my wife works at a call center and she can provide for him better. And, oh, by the way, I got to pay $4,000 child support every month. Well, and that's if they actually work at a call center and can provide them better. They're, I mean, we live in Texas where women with drug habits are getting custody over their children, over men who are fucking, you know, essentially, you know, the modern society standard of straight-A students. Yeah, it's, it's wild, bro. But... This all takes into account the fact that, and I'm taking into account the fact that there are people who will slot into the gray area. And there will. There will always be a gray area. And so, I say, with the gray area people, we take them, and we put them on a farm somewhere. They still have a year. Well, no, no, no. If they're a gray, if they cannot function in society, because there will be the gray area people who straight up and down cannot function in society and have to be removed and it just it won't work right there will always be your outliers yes right i see where you're going we take the outliers and we put them on a farm somewhere and it's like we're going to give you the very basics of material for survival so you won't freeze to death and you won't starve but you have to build your own home you have to farm and and garden your own food We'll provide all the stuff yeah right i mean we talk about the average, last time I looked, prison system, they make, I think it was like 36000 average across the states. Yeah. Guess where our poverty line is? Uh, 45. Nope. It's less than 36. 36 is our poverty no, line. No, it's less than 36. Less than 36. 19,000 is the average last time I looked. I might be wrong. I might have looked at a wrong report. Oh, my bad. 45 is the average. 45 is the average income. Yeah. 36 is the average allotment paid towards prisoners. They don't see it all. They see pennies on the dollar. Yeah. But it counts for their food, shitty food. It counts for their bedding, their plumbing. This counts for all their accurate. So, fine. Yeah. If we're already spending 36000 here you go. Here's four of you, 12 of you, build a fucking house. Yeah. And, and people are like, well, how do you make sure they don't go away? And I'm like, snipers. I mean, you talk here's, about... Here, here's your border, and if you try to exceed the border, I shoot you. I, and that's the end of it. It's like... And that's it. Here's, here, yeah. here is the dead zone. 100%. Here, here is the dead zone. And you know what? We'll even put a fucking fence there. No. Just, not a no tall fe- fence. No, no. Oh, oh just, like a, just like a donkey fence? Just like a donkey... Just something there so you can... You have a visible notification, like your fences. You can jump over your fence. Oh, hop it. But you're just like, is this supposed... No, that's not supposed... It's to visibly show you what your border is. So as we're closing down on time, I want to touch on diamonds. Okay. Because... Before we touch on diamonds and we close down on time, I need another drink. Ooh, another drink. Always, always drinking. Only on podcast though. Let's go, boy. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Did you need something? 
something? No, I'm good. I still got another one. Oh, you're just waiting. Watching him walk away. Like you always do. It's getting cold outside. What's the temperature? I don't know. I don't know how this tablet works. It's mine, but I don't know how it works. Um, it says it's cold. Low of 44 today. What is the current temperature right now? Can't you do like voice things? Tablet, tell me how to do things. Weather tomorrow. Use precise location. Weather in where I'm at now. Hey, note to self. Turn off my heat when I leave the door open. Yeah. <laughs> is it so much hotter in your house now? No, I just the heat's just heating up the cold air outside. Solid. It's trying to look up the weather. It says 51 right now. Do you want me to check? No, it said 51. No, I'll check. Oh, he's going to check. I'm going to check. He's going to prove me wrong. I got a weather station. It's got to be 48. Woo! <laughs> so it's just me and you out here. It's 45 outside. It's 45. And it's hot. This is why you buy a weather station. I don't need a weather station. Would yeah. I look like a weatherman? Yeah, you do. So, we're going to talk about the five C's of diamonds. So, first off, we're going to talk about why we're talking about diamonds. <laughs> we're not talking about the five C's. We're not? Do you know about the five C's? I don't know about the five C's. Cut, clarity, color. Oh. Carrot, and there's something else. I don't remember. Dude, there's four of them. I don't know anything. But... Diamonds. Mike wanted to talk about diamonds, and I was like, "What specifically about diamonds?" Because I got some, I got some studies on this. Whoo! That's spicy. Whole left side of my face is burnt. I should have put on suntan lotion. <laughs> I I set the fucking thing on fire. <laughs> the gas can. No, I, I set the outside. I saw the outside on this side <laughs> on fire. It's like, woo! My toes were getting cold. They warm now, though. Ah, warm so, up my feetsies. What about diamonds did you specifically want to talk about? Well, okay. So, what I wanted to talk about was the difference between um, lab and mined diamonds. And I wanted to dive okay. into, um, you know, blood diamonds and all that jazz. The new manufactured diamonds that they're pushing out. Well, they've been pushing out manufactured diamonds. They they first invented manufactured diamonds back in the 50s. It didn't Correct. really become profitable until relatively recently in the last... 2009 is when it started. So, the reason I brought this up is because you see my grandfather's ring, right? Yes. Um, I looked down the other day, and there was a diamond missing. Those are relatively large diamonds, right? It's It's probably... If I remember the ring properly, it's probably like a good tenth carat. Like, it, it's a pretty decent size for a man's ring. Yeah. Um. It's not your giant Queen fuck you. Victorian. Yeah. Fuck you! I spent a billion dollars on this carat engagement ring, and so I had. So obviously, I'm missing a diamond, so I wanted to replace it. It's my grandfather's, right? And. I had had another diamond which had shattered, right, yeah. um, and needed to be replaced. It was probably a cubit zirconium then. No, it was a diamond. A diamond diamond shattered? So people have this misconception. No, I know they can break. I'm just curious what all this went through for it to break. Well, I mean, I wear it all the time, right? People have a misconception. <laughs> they think that because diamonds are used for a hardness scale. I have a buddy. We call them drill bit. No one cares. No, but this goes into the diamonds. Okay. We went through every single drill bit, including diamond drill bits, and couldn't get the screw out yeah. on a motorcycle. So he's been known as drill bit since. But we went through diamond drill bits and destroyed them. I know diamond drill bits. I know diamonds can be destroyed. But well, diamonds are hard. They're hardened, yes. But they're brittle that's why when i shattered one 
it wasn't shocking. Yeah. You know, everyone's every, because again, they hear in the that movie, and they're they, like, oh, they use them in they use them in hardness scales. They're like diamonds are the hardest thing, blah 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 blah. But they're brittle. Well, it's the same thing as obsidian glass. Yeah, obsidian glass is the sharpest to date, but it's super fucking brittle. But, but back to diamonds, we're talking about the ring. So you so I it. I I. I was missing a diamond, so I took it into a, a, a local store in Bernie. Um, the bougie stores, of course. But they know what they're doing. No, no, no. This is a small town store. Yeah, and Bernie. Yeah. Bernie's bougie. Not, no. Okay. If we're talking, if I was going into a bougie store, I would have taken it into James Avery You're there in Lock and You're not going to a name-labeled store. You're yeah. going to a German back from the 1950s, 60s. Store yeah, this that's is been an mom old. Pop yeah, this is forever, an old mom pop store. But in today's time, it's became a bougie town. Okay. Because it's it's more expensive, but they're proper with their prices. They really are. So, despite whatever keepers on right now, well, um, you, <laughs> you promise? Uh, I'm a tease. <laughs> So you take uh, it to the mom so and pop. So anyway, so I took it to the mom and pop store, but I had done all my research ahead of time because I knew With that manufactured cubic zirconia. Yeah, lab. And diamonds. They call it lab grown as opposed to mine. Well, there's three. There's cubic zirconium, which is a hundred percent. That's 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 fake. That's not even diamond. Correct, but they're still sold as diamonds. Then you have your manufactured, which they're called lab grown. Manufactured lab grown, yes are indistinguishable from diamonds. Not true. Oh, well, I'm all ears then. Let me get to it. All right. Oh, wait. I'm Fucking cutting stop you interrupting off. me. Damn. Fuck. God. No one loves you. That's not what my mom says. Your mom also says you're pretty. I don't think she's ever called me pretty. So, your mom, on the other hand, said I'm a pretty attractive gentleman. And your dad said so, too. Yeah, well, they both lied because they said I'm handsome, and we both know they're lying. They're definitely lying then. Um, right, so I regress. <laughs> you regress. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So, all ears. so I I did all my research, and by eye, they cannot tell the difference between a lab grown diamond and a mined diamond. Is that not what I just said? No. They're indistinguishable? No. You can't tell the difference? No. Is that not what you just said? No. Because I need you to actually repeat what I just said. What did I just say? They cannot tell the difference. By? I don't know. I missed that part. I. Oh. Well, meh. Yeah. So there's actual test equipment that they can use, which is like some kind of spectrometer or whatever, you know, science talk, which they can put the diamond in and it can tell the difference between a lab-grown diamond and a mined diamond. Does this go into the clarity of the diamond? I don't know what it goes into. No, I'm, I'm asking, is this more into, like, the diamond's more No, because fuzzy? the clarity's the same. Okay. The, 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 the cuts are the same. They grow them the same as they are grown when they're grown in ground. It has something to do with they're able to determine the age based off the spectrum of the diamond okay. somehow. That's interesting. I didn't read that part in my yeah. research. That's a relatively recent thing. Okay. Um, those machines cost what, like nine thousand, ten thousand. I thought they dollars. cost starting ten thousand for the low grade. Yeah. Um, but so I called. They they called me up and they gave me an estimate and they said, "Okay, well you're." For this great, one, it costs these, the, these. These diamonds are well. It's relatively large diamonds. So to replace both of them is four hundred and eighty dollars per diamond. Another three hundred dollars to redo all the prongs on some, the ring yeah. because all the like they're they're, they're loose. Aged. They need to be redone. Yeah, it's an old it's ring. Gold is it not? Yeah, it, it's yeah. fourteen carat. Yeah, it was the um, old one. And it's it doesn't have a stamp on it. That's how old it is, right? Um, they did it. my research. My understanding they didn't start stamps until late thirties. Yeah, so I don't know how old this Mass ring is. Mass majority, like the big yeah. names, didn't start it till late thirties, which means lower end, lower quote unquote. The Mon Pa shops probably didn't start about fifties, sixties. 
So I they said 480 for for these diamonds. And I was like, all right, so those are mined, right? And she goes, yeah. And I was like, can you tell me what an estimate for lab grown is? She's like, let me call and give you an estimate. The estimate for lab grown was $200 for both diamonds. Now, I will give them credit because they called me back after I said, yeah, go ahead and go with the lab grown. And they said that they got a call from another retailer for mined diamonds saying it would be 480 for both diamonds. Okay. Well, and I understand that because I did a lot of diamond research back in 2012 because I was planning on proposing to my, at the time, girlfriend, high school sweetheart, and wanted a giant carrot, wanted all this, wanted, I wanted all the bells and whistles. So I did all the research, the five C's, and it, it gets expensive quick, but diamonds are per place. They're, diamonds are zip code. Mm. Pretty much just because you can buy it here in Texas at this rate, you can buy it cheaper somewhere else. And they're from the same place, but because quantity, level, what people have, it's different. So... You know that the diamond market, the mined diamond market, is artificially held up. It's an right? artificial economy. Yes, it's a very artificial economy. There are vaults full of unique diamonds. Someone and sold someone a diamond, and there's never going to be another one of those diamonds, even though there might be so many of them in the vault. Yep, and that's Russia. Where- you Russia. get the blood diamonds. Yeah, Russia has a huge diamond population. Do you know how blood diamonds get cleaned? Mm-mm. So the biggest thing is you can't distinguish a blood diamond versus a normal diamond. They're indistinguishable. You can't trace them. It's impossible. It's never been possible. The only way you can do it is if it actually has a proper paper trail. Yeah. Well, if I hand you this engagement ring from my great grandpappy that my great grandmother wore and done it. There's no paper trail. There's no paper trail. So what they do is they take it to diamond sellers, people that do rings, people that do replacements for whatever, and they take them there. So the paper trail starts there. And they label it as mass diamonds bought. Oh, what's that? So diamonds are very, very hard to trace where they're currently, where they were mined at. So, I mean, we'll see. Eventually, I'm sure in the next couple of years, we'll find a way to track them, carbon date them or something. Well, I mean, that's, that's the thing is like the, the technology is constantly progressing along with what we're doing. So we're always finding a new way to discover. Yep. You something. know, and prove that improve this was. And discover yes. discover the same thing better. So maybe in the next couple of years, we'll be able to finally trace blood diamonds and stop this whole African, Indian, Chinese, and Australian trade market that we have right now, even well, South and, America. And, and realistically, we could stop it as long as everyone stopped buying into diamonds, buying into James Avery, buying into, you know, because James... You're buying a name. You're paying for a name. Yep. It's James Avery this, K Jewelers this. Like, you're buying a name. That's all you're buying. But we're we're going to do a lot more of this offline. I, I guess it is time to do some offline talk. So, this has been Name Pending been fun hanging with you guys i mean it's been something Um, of course i'm mike culberson (laughs) and i'm keeper i need you to fuck that like button throw a comment below tell me what you like dislikes especially that guy not pointing fingers that guy that guy i'm the pretty one (laughs) i'm (laughs) pretty he got a purty mouth (laughs) but this is name pending as he said like you said fuck that like bucking throw a bucking bucking throw that Wait, Throw that in there, the, like button. The, I need you to do the, that comment dirty, right? Do the do the comment and throw the like button. And his name pending. Fun hanging with you guys. <laughs>